You are watching With a Cup of Tea, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings. Now, here's our show. Anthology, this is a big book. This is it is. <laughs> it was very ambitious. I'm very impressed. I even yeah. I even talked with the uh, woman who designed the the book. Um, oh, you did with Brie Baron, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's a nice design. It's easy to read. Um, sometimes these anthologies have such small print and they're um, crowded on the page, and and you just don't, you know, you're. You're defeated before you open. <laughs> you start reading, <laughs> but this one's well, good. Yeah. yeah, I was impressed actually. She's very detail oriented and uh, mm -hmm. uh, put a lot of thought into, you know, all the little details of typesetting that people normally don't think about. Right, right. Yeah. And some of these, some of this work in here has, it's very experimental. So it has all kinds of. Um, lining in between and um, three or four different columns and it's, it's wild. So welcome to this house of books. We have with us Brie Barron, who's book designer for Poetics for the More Than Human World, an anthology of poetry and commentary. So welcome Brie. Hi, thank you. Yeah. Um, we don't usually get to interview book designers, so you have a, a, some information that you can give us, uh, uniquely uh, can give us. Um, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What's your background? Um, I am from Columbia Falls, Montana, oh. um, over by Glacier National Park. Um, I moved here with my mom uh, when I was like in middle school. Um, so I've been here for most of my life. Um, I go to MSUB. I'm an English major um, with a focus on literature, but I am going to go to grad school for linguistics. So <laughs> just switching, switching focuses there. Um, I have two kids. They're wonderful. Mm. They do not like typesetting. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they like typesetting? They say it's too hard. <laughs> oh, right. They don't want to do it. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So many people think that layout and typesetting are like word processing. But in your experience, how are they different? Um, <clears throat> I think in, in word processing, there's not a lot of, um, I guess, aesthetics that you have to worry about. It's, it's just, you know, it's words. Um, in, in typesetting, there's, you know, there's shape and there's, you know, the feel, the, I don't know, the, the vibe of what it looks like can, can impact, you know, how, how it's interpreted. So especially with a book like this, that was really important to me in not impacting that a lot. So I was doing a lot of trying to keep things looking right. But I don't I don't know how much of that is involved in word processing, but yeah, that's how it feels anyway. <laughs> well, it seems like with uh, word processing, you just do uh, your font choice. You choose mm -hmm. Times New Roman, and uh, <laughs> it's just everything goes with that, you know. Yeah, yeah. But how did how do you go about selecting a font for a book of poetry? Um, okay, so I chose Baskerville. Uh, for this one, it was one of a few, and I liked it because it's it's fairly close to Times New Roman. Uh -huh. People are generally pretty comfortable with it's kind of it's, it's the default choice, right? It's a real classic uh, book so face. Clean. Yes, it's so clean. Um, but I didn't want to do Times New Roman because I didn't want it to look like super academic, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that, um, but. I just, I think that Baskerville is, it's a little more rounded, a little softer, and that kind of vibed with everything that I wanted to see in the book. Mm -hmm. 
So that's kind of why we went with that one, I think. So you say you worked with the poets. In what way did you work with the poets? How did, uh, how did you interact? Uh, OK. Uh, for instance, there's um, a wonderful poet in the book, Amy Evans Bauer. Um, and we did a Zoom call um, and just shared screens so that she could see exactly what I was doing and so that everything would line up correctly which because that's important in some of these pieces it doesn't matter and some of them it really matters mm -hmm. so you know we worked together for an hour or so an hour or two together and just lining things up right and making sure that it was correct some of these are in different languages that I don't speak <laughs> so <laughs> there was some corrections going on and you know stuff like that but it was really wonderful to get to talk with them and you know kind of like be privy to their process so wow. it's really cool as a literature major <laughs> yeah that is really fun actually that's yeah great. that's interesting i didn't know that uh you know as a typesetter you would be able to get that kind of yeah. access and interaction but yeah not always not not with everybody but some yeah. took more work than others and that was fine with me i wanted it to be perfect so sure whatever yeah. i had to do <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think this is just a really fun opportunity to to kind of get some insight into the construction of, uh, you know, books of poetry are fairly complicated, and this is yeah. a, an interesting little yeah. bit of insight. So. It's a mammoth book, so. It is, uh, you know, what, 140 poets? Yeah, 256 pieces. Really? And illustrations, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Those were way easier. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Just put those on the page. Yep. Get the right resolution, put them where they go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot for uh, for visiting with us today, Bree. Yeah. I appreciate thanks. it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Good to talk. Yeah. So long. All right. So long. Bye. Bye. Bye.